and welcome. We are trying to hold on to a small rally this morning. We've got Brexit in focus. What's going to happen with UVXY? How to play things and what's going on with the rest of current affairs in this market today? All that and more coming up next right now on the Short Vol Show Live. Thanks for watching. Welcome to the Short Vol Show Live. My name is David Lincoln, and you are here with me today, this morning, as we see a market that has finally rallied a little bit for a day, but how long will it continue um, as we have some pretty extraordinary looking charts to look at? Um, I've been watching this British Parliament stuff all morning as they debate an emergency Brexit uh vote type situation here. Uh, let's check out, let's join them live for a second and see what's going on there. And every time legitimate scrutiny is performed by people on this side, we are shut down and told it's political point scoring. This is a government, no I won't, because there's a lot of people who want to get it. This is a government that's crippled by indecision and paralyzed by Brexit. Yeah, yeah. It was our side who were accused when we were trying to steer a course for the 48% and the 52% mm. of being um, into constructed ambiguity. But now they've adopted a strategy. But All right, so um, as Parliament debates Brexit, and you know what? I gotta say, I love British Parliament. I love the people heckling in the background and all of that stuff. Um, you know, I come from a political family, but I try very hard to stay, keep away from politics with this channel. And it can indeed be difficult at times. Um, the conversations around the dinner table at, at our house um, are in a detente right now because we uh, have both sides of the political spectrum in the U.S. represented. And um, we have a peace agreement going on right now. But in general... Um, Politics are in focus all the time in, in, in my family, and I, I find it hard to lay off at times. Um, just as far as Brexit goes, I'm for um, the UK staying in the Union. But, um, of course, it's not up to me, and we'll have to see what happens with Theresa May here as she is on a trip around Europe right now trying to finalize a deal. Uh, in the meantime, back in the U.S., we have um, the markets being swayed back and forth by tariff info coming out, um, whether the you know tariffs are going higher, lower, supported, not, and it seems to um, be moving the markets uh, once again today up a little bit for tariff news. It seems uh, for me, I don't, I think that um, tariffs are. Not a good thing. Um, I'm a free trade type guy. Um, I do respect the views of many in the U.S. that um, China needs to be um, reined in as far as copying intellectual stuff, the uh, intellectual property. You know, if somebody um, comes up with a unique individual idea, they patent it or copy it, and for um, China to just take that stuff and copy it immediately or to require when they're in a corporate deal with an American company to um, obtain all of that technology as part of every deal um, doesn't seem right. But once again, I'm treading uh, lightly here because I um, want to stay out of politics as best I can with this channel. Um, so let's take a look at the markets. How about that? Um, right now, E-mini's only up 11. They were up about 30 before. And um, UVXY currently 64.33. It got down to about 62 and change, I believe. Here's the chart. Um, you know, I've pretty much, um, I'm kind of like risk off right now in UVXY just because it's been a tough one to trade. I know that 
many people have, uh, you know, it's been a tough year for, for a short vol trade, of obviously. The only, um, of all the ETFs or ETPs in the world, the only ones that are really up a lot are the, the volatility ones this year. Um, hang in there, people. Like I said, the short vol show, you would think even the name, the short vol show, would indicate that uh, things haven't been a great PL wise situation. But that uh, can be deceptive because just because this is called the short vol show doesn't mean that we're somehow required to be short vol all the time. Uh, this is actually more about uh, discovering and educating people about volatility, and it should be of use to both people on the long side and the short side. Um, currently, as I said, UVXY down 66 cents, VXX down 19 cents. I did post a tweet talking about how the VVIX uh, seems lower than it quote unquote should be. Now, we know that when something is quoted in the market at a certain price, that is what it should be. That's, that's the, the price of what it is. So saying what something should be is kind of a... Um, philosophically a futile task in a way. Um, however, VVIX right now, 90, 80, let's take a look for a second at VVIX. And we see um, really has been below 100 for a while. Now, if we back this up a little bit to like say the, you know, that Vomageddon, we saw it get up uh, above 200. Let me see if I can kind of center these charts a little bit better here. This is like, too big. Let me see if I can make this a little bit smaller. Um, anyway, we saw it during Vomageddon um, topping 200, and now that's a little bit better. Um, and then we see this spike here at the beginning of October going up to 150, but currently we're really not seeing a peak in VVIX here. You see that? It's down lower. And I believe part of that is, is that volatility is already up above 20. So there's not as much of a rush to buy out of the money calls in the VIX when we're already up in the 20s. It's more when we're down around 10, 11, that there's a rush to buy out of the money calls and to make these trades on a big VIX move. Because now in the actual VIX, the moves are basically between 17 and 23. It's it's a tighter range than when volatility is way, way low down. And I have a little buzzing in my ear there. Um, meanwhile, the MJs, uh, once again, Afria, or Afria, um, rallying a little bit today. It's come back a little bit from that um, devastating short seller report. Um, I, I kind of feel like the play in here is, is, is not that existent right now. And if I were playing it, I probably would be fading this rally. Uh, Tilray looking sick. Um, Tilray looking like it's just going to slowly, slowly move lower. As time goes by with Tilray, one of the things that made Tilray rally so much um, in that historic uh, rally to 300 uh, was that it has a very low float, which means there's not that many shares around to trade. I believe that the float was 17 million shares. And then, um, but as, um, as time goes by, a lot of the shares that insiders hold, um, the lockout period ends. And so that shares that can be traded are added to that float as time goes by. Um, generally, adding shares to the float is um, can be bearish for a stock because it dilutes the stock. Um, however, it, you know if there's enough demand, it, it can be offset. But in Tilray's case, and with all the uh, reporting of market caps and how they're um, very high PE ratios for MJ stocks and whatnot, um, we could see this move lower slowly i think that's the sort of the general consensus um so it'll be interesting to watch tilray moving forward let's look at uh implied volatility in tilray for a second here and see kind of where we stand um it doesn't even show here but um showing implied volatility in the high 90s it was up to like 130 um 
let's take a look at individual options here for a second. So uh, Jan at the money volatility. According to my charts here. Well, this is showing, I don't think this is right. It's showing, f it's not, I, I don't believe this is centered, right? Um, anyways, I, I believe it's down in the low hundreds. Uh, it was up to like 140, but I believe it's come in uh, somewhat at this point. It appears my charts are a little funky here, so I'm not going to really rely on that right now. Um, but Vol has come in a little bit. Uh, I believe in Tilray. Uh, meanwhile, Tesla Tesla has held up pretty well, folks, for um, through this whole sell-off period here. Let's take a look at the Tesla chart here for a second. Um, 365 right now, and really, there's the story of Tesla. And doesn't look like we're in the middle of a market correction as far as Tesla is concerned. At least, we just have a big rally going on. Um, Pretty impressive from Tesla. Also, uh, Facebook appears to try to be trying to mount a comeback here uh, over the last week or so. Uh, we'll see if that continues or if it sort of fizzles out. Um, also, Enbev appears to be trying to mount a little bit of a comeback here as well. Uh, Apple today still down. Um, the other one I've been looking at a little bit is uh, Deutsche Bank. I've been kind of thinking about whether Deutsche Bank might be a um, a good spot to kind of bottom feed here a little bit with it. Um, is it catching a falling knife or is this a chance to maybe step in and buy some farther out, maybe like nine calls or something like that? Um, when I look at Deutsche Bank... And uh, I go out to like July, you know, July nine calls could be had for under a dollar. You could suppose you could buy the, like the July nine, 12 call spread, paying 72 cents. Um, seems like a reasonable shot. Um, gives you out to July. You could go all the way out to maybe Jan of next year. The Jan. Let's see, the Jan 10, 15 call spread, for example. So you pay 80 cents. You'll probably be had for 80, 82 cents, the Jan 10, 15 call spread. Um, that gives you 400 days for a rebound here in Deutsche Bank. Seems like um, a reasonable shot. Um, now, I, I'm not familiar with the fundamentals of Deutsche Bank at this time, but... Um, I've often tempted by these ones that have like gone way down uh, and to try to kind of bottom feed on them. And, you know, you really have to pick a company that actually is viable, that's not just going to continue lower and go to and like crumble into the dust. Um, I cite many times my experience with Sun Edison, where um, I basically wrote it down into the dust. And I would like to avoid that experience for you if possible uh, let's pull up sun edison here i know the company is defunct completely sun edison emerges from bankruptcy a shadow of its former self sun edison sets bankruptcy exit with nothing for shareholders a wall street boom and bust story sun edison um, Sun Edison, a, a Wall Street boom and bust story. Sun Edison stock is a classic Wall Street boom and bust story with shares rocketing over 2,000% before eventually losing almost all of their value. The volatility was largely driven by operational fluctuations attributable to deteriorating fundamentals in the solar industry. And there you go. And uh, for me, that was a painful lesson in falling in love with an issue and riding it into the ground. And this is sort of what I cautioned against with um, Afria, for example. Now, Afria is a different stock and maybe a different story. And I don't know the future, so uh, who knows what will happen. But, um, um, but 
I can tell you that short seller report was pretty scary. But, you know, if we look at the chart right now in Afria, it appears that that 375 was definitely a scoop. Um, back looking to um, threatening to go back above six again. Um, I was checking out this issue and maybe some of my viewers can help me out on this. Uh, HOML. Um, two time leverage. Uh, ETN. I don't know what it is. I, I believe it's a REIT ETN, but um, I was just I just came across it. And if anyone knows about that, I'd be thrilled to hear about it. Uh, in volatility news, we did have um, VIX Central was down a little bit yesterday due to lack of quotes coming from the SIBO. Uh, let's take a look at VIX Central now and your term structure. So as we look at the term structure, um, it was very flat for a while, but with the increased sell-off, we actually have uh, gone into backwardation pretty steady now. We're at 3.2% uh, backwardation, and it looks like a classic sort of backwardation uh, sort of chart there. Um, if we do see a little bit more of a down move in volatility, this should turn more into a smiley face type um, chart but in in general pretty flat um but we'll have to see moving forward if we do get that santa claus rally or not it seems to me that the whole story here is of course moving back once again what we always focus on is this chart right here this is the um let's see here's a 20 day chart of the e minis and we see the story here of basically sideways to down, um, selling off for several days, trying to rally here, but it appears to be f the, this rally appears to be failing once again. Um, it's been tough for me. I'm pretty much just been risk off in UVXY because uh, you know my attempts to short it at different levels have pretty much failed. Um, I'm not afraid to come on here and admit that um, it hasn't always gone the way I, I would have liked to this year in UVXY. It's been a tough year. Um, however, it doesn't change the fact that the short vol trade is viable. It's just that we're not in a situation right now where, where we've had um, consistent contango to get the uh, advantages of contango working in our favor. So until we, we can get back in contango and have that be a little bit consistent, uh, shorting volatility is not going to be a good long-term deal. Um, that being said, the way to, to go about um, putting a position on, in my opinion, would be to buy um, put spreads farther out. So a put spread is when you buy one put and sell another, um, puts being uh, for the uninitiated puts being a um, an option contract that allows you the right to sell um, a security at a certain price so if you buy the 65 put that allows you to sell UVXY at 65 regardless as regardless of where it goes to so even if UVXY goes to 50 you can still sell it for 65 if you own a 65 put so the way we go about uh, one strategy for shorting a, uh, a security using puts is to is to uh, enter into a put spread, which is buying one put and selling another. So example of that would be here in UVXY. If we had an opinion that this was going to go lower, but we don't quite know when, but we feel like it's going to go lower over time, which is the general consensus. Um, we might pick a put spread that was farther out. And something I might look at would be, for example, go out to pretty far at this point because things have not been so rosy. So maybe even go out to June, 192 days away, and look at something like the June 50, 45 put spread. So buy June 50 put, sell June 45 put. So um, this is a $5 put spread. It can be worth $5 at most. If you were to able, 
were able to buy it mid-market here, you would be paying about half its value. So the theory is that by June, UVXY um, would be below 45, and thus you would uh, double your money by June. Um, that is it's somewhat likely if we go back into Contango, but if things just keep rocking the way they are, um, we could see UVXY uh, deteriorate less quickly. Uh, UVXY will deteriorate because it is a leverage uh, ETF. It will deteriorate um, due to sort of slippage, uh, due to the leverage component and rebalancing. However, um, that is being offset right now by the fact that we're in backwardation and every day we rebalance in backwardation, UVXY's value um, goes up a teeny bit. Right now with 3% backwardation, uh, that means that over a course of a month, if we stay at 3% backwardation, UVXY will go up by 3%. So let's do the math on that. 0 0.03 times, let's say 64, equals 192. So if we stay with the term structure the way it is, UV and everything else stays the same, UVXY will be a dollar ninety two higher in a month's time than it is right now due to the effects of rebalancing with a term structure and backwardation. Now that will be offset a little bit by a slippage of rebalancing a leveraged fund like this, but either way, it's not moving uh, it's not uh, decaying to the downside rapidly right now at all. So um, as long as that remains the case, there is really no advantage to shorting these things. There's no edge in shorting it. Um, it's more just a play of where you think volatility is going to go. And with us in backwardation, um, it's just as easy to go long as to go short as far as any edge is concerned. Um, you can look at volatility historically, and we are in sort of a mid-range historically for volatility right now, so that's not going to give you a clue either. So um, while we're in this sort of situation, once again, there's no real advantage to shorting um, volatility unless you're, taking a, you're making a short-term play. Um, if you think that this situation is going to be remedied at some point in the next few months, and that the market is going to settle down the next few months, then um, I would consider doing, you know, maybe uh, investigating one of these put spreads here, which would, you know, a more aggressive form of this would be to buy the June 40, uh, 30 put spread. So buy the June 40 put, sell the June 30 put. So paying basically a third of the price of the spread and trying to triple your money, a uh, more aggressive play. Another play to consider. Um, that is bullish, but um, a little bit more conservative would be to maybe buy the something like buy the March 50 put and sell the um, maybe one of the early Jan weeklies or even the Jan 50 put against it. Now what you're doing is you're you're buying a put time spread. Um, so if we look at this and analyze it uh, this way, you are leaning short, but you're collecting money every day. So if I were to do this uh, 15 times, um, it would make me short 87 deltas. I collect about 20 bucks a day. It would cost me about five thousand dollars to put on, and you 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 accomplish being short a little bit of volatility, uh, and you're being paid for it a little bit each day. Um, so that's a a better possibility to me. I'd rather be paid a little bit to be short uh, because that's going to offset if we spike again um, and sort of time, it's putting time a little bit back more in your favor if you enter one of these uh, put time spreads. Um, and it seems like a better opportunity for me than just buying puts or put spreads in the front months and getting smoked as we move higher and higher in volatility. Um, 
looking at the charts once again for the E minis. And if we back this out a little bit, let's go to like 180 days. Um, if we break down lower again, which, you know, we're sort of trending down, um, and we could definitely break down lower again, and that would definitely make the volatility spike higher. So um, we kind of have this level that, I don't know, it's sort of established here, but it's unclear if there's a, like a really key level. And this I'm not the right person to tell you what a really like key level in this is, but we can definitely see that this rally has broken down and could move lower at some point as we are now only up seven and a half points in the E-minis today. Uh, meanwhile, Tesla appears to be rallying uh, up f almost four right now from being down two. So definitely a strong uh, mover today, Tesla. All right, so I hope I've given you something to think about a little bit here. Um, do continue to check out this um, British Parliament stuff. I, I've been enjoying watching it this morning. Um, and it's interesting to see a government in action and the way it's sort of transparent with watching Parliament is fascinating. And so it won't be agreed. I think Brexit itself is a betrayal of conservatism because obviously it gets rid of the best trading model there is in the world. It gets rid of the United Kingdom Union. Because if obviously, we have a, if we have an exit but without a deal, there will necessarily be a hard border. Otherwise, there will be a free border for migration to move in and out. It just won't work. As for socialism, the ec Brexit... And thanks for joining me today. Um, I'd be interested in any comments you have about the market and volatility. Uh, please consider supporting me on Patreon. I can really use your support right now um, through, uh, through the winter. Um, I want to take this channel to the next level, but I certainly need your support. Um, you could, if you could um, give $5 down below, that would be an awesome level to uh, help out. It doesn't it's not much for most people to give five bucks, and it hugely helps me out. I know there's a lot of channels clamoring for your money and whatnot, but I'm not a um, I'm not looking to sell you something for thousands of dollars. I'm just looking for support to keep my channel running so that I can focus fully on this channel and not have to have too many side jobs. Uh, thank you for watching today, and I'm going to get back to watching the Parliament. And uh, you definitely enjoy getting back to what you were doing revoke article 50 and stay in the EU if we have got a deal any sort of deal we should put it to the people uh, by deferring article 50 so they can decide do they want the deal on the table that the EU will accept because we won't agree in here